Hey Birch House friends, welcome back. We're here at the Romanowski Test Range, and to be honest, it's kind of loud out here today. Um, a lot of cars driving by, there's been somebody shooting over here, um, so bear with us as we get through this video. But you saw the thumbnail, you know what we're getting up to, a destruction test of our Gen 2 kite shields. Now, we did a video about a year ago on kite shields and we even did a destruction test on our Gen 1 kite shields and at that time we focused on the Stetschian kite shield um, which was a very interesting kite shield design. Well let me introduce our Gen 2 kite shield and it is the more iconic teardrop shape that most people associate with this style of shield. Now these are period accurate authentically built. They are 8 to 9 millimeter thick white pine planks. They are warped to achieve a nice curve. They feature a gi strap, adjustable arm straps in a four square configuration, and a back arm pad. Now, uh, you happen to, you probably noticed, let's talk about sex real quick, that this shield's kind of ugly. That's because we've been building this since the summer. Um, I've been just building this periodically. You've probably seen it in the background of a lot of our Hey Birch House videos. Uh, because I've been just kind of slowly building this, preparing for this video, um, just making it between um, custom orders and things of that nature. Speaking of custom orders, these shields can be custom ordered in a variety of layouts. So they can have a center boss or no center boss. Um, they can be uh, a wood facing, just a bare wood facing. They could have a 100% linen facing like this one or a rawhide facing. Same thing on the back. Uh, it could be bare wood, rawhide, or linen. Um, and they can either have a rawhide edge reinforcement or no rawhide edge reinforcement. Lots of options to fit both your aesthetic and your budget. Um, and so, and all these uh, customizations are period accurate. We have examples of shields in, in this, of all different types of ranges. Um, now, regardless of how you customize your shield, the facing will be painted with paint from the Real Milk Paint Company, which achieves a period accurate uh, aesthetic as well as coloration. And uh, you uh, will be riveted together with uh, nails hand forged from us, for us from our friends at Oogles Night Forge. If you go with a center boss, that center boss will also be made by Oogles Night Forge. Um, before we beat this shield up, let's talk a little bit about the history of the kite shield. So, if you do a cursory glance at the internet, you will see claims of this shield coming from the 9th to the 12th century. Um, from my research and the examples of, uh, that I have gathered, um, I surmise this is probably from the 10th to early 12th century. Um, however, having said that, um, I see the kite shield keeps popping up throughout medieval and even renaissance art um, and referenced as well um, in codexes and manuscripts, things of that nature. In fact, earlier this week, my son showed me a picture of an engraving of the Battle of Flodden, and this engraving was done in 1513, and oh look, what is that? A kite shield. Um, now, our best resource for kite shields is the Bayou Tapestry, um, which is depicting the Battle of Hastings, where we see the kite shield being used by both infantry and cavalry. Now, you'll see a lot of people argue for these being primarily cavalry shields. However, Matt Easton of Skull Gladiatoria has laid out, I think, very concise, very good arguments on these being primarily infantry shields. And to summarize his points, in the most oversimplified way possible. The kite shield makes for a good infantry shield because of this long tail that covers the leg in a time where knights not wear leg armor, where warriors don't wear leg armor, and allow you to fight from over the shield. Now, I'm gonna put a link in the description to uh, at least one of his videos on the subject. He explains it much better than I can in this a uh, very compact uh, form. So, that's enough history about the kite shield. Let's talk about the destruction test and let's get to it. 
before we do, we're going to do the destruction test the way we always have done the destruction test, which is three blows from a sword, three hits from an axe, uh, three strikes from a spear, and today we're adding three blows from a bill, and finally, three shots with a bow and arrow. Having said all that, let's get to the fun. And there you have it, the Birch House Woodcraft's Kite Shield Gen 2. Um, what a cool shield and what a cool piece of history. Um, of all the shields that we have stress test, our, our products that we have stress test, um, this one took the least amount of damage. It really did just absorb all the damage we threw at it. Um, it just tanked each hit and there are no bro there's no breaks, there's no faults, there's nothing that flew off of the shield. All the rivets are in place. It's still very flexible. Um, it's a very solid shield. No rattle. Um, just a, a really great build, and we are so happy to be offering this here at Birch House Woodcrafts. So where can you get your own? Oh, by the way, um, the one thing I did notice is that we cut through the rawhide, rawhide a few times. A few of the sinew uh, stitching uh, was cut. No muss, no fuss. Um, so where can you get your own Birch House Woodcrafts Gen 2 Kite Shield? Well, we are on GoImagine.com where we will stock them periodically, as well as you can custom order your own Kite Shield. And I'm going to put a link in the description to all the places you can contact us to get started custom ordering this amazing piece of kit. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video. Welcome to Birch House, where history meets the art. We do diligence, we do our part. And here at Birch House, let me implore. We work damn hard for you, but it's not a joke.